All right, hey guys, welcome again to Fire Alarms and such, and this is going to be an overview of a Notifier AFP200 Intelligent Fire Detection and Alarm System Control Panel. So this is the outside of the panel. It is a relatively small panel compared to the Simplex 4010 and the Silent Night SK5208. So this is basically all that's really happening on the outside. All the conduit knockouts are on the side. There are no ones off the back. So if we go ahead and open up the main panel door, mine does have a dress panel on it. On the panel door, it tells you, you know, your basic um, regulations, warranty, FM certifications, UL certifications, and everything else. Basically, your certifications, warranties, limitations, all the legal jargons on the door. Coming over here to the dress panel itself, you see you have a couple different um, warnings up there about high voltage and if there's any sort of trouble what to do and everything about that. Down here you have basic instructions on what to do in a fire setting. Just very basic, here's how to control your own panel. And then these are more um, intricate instructions on how to see histories and stuff of things that have happened if you are the building owner. And then here you would remove this part if you are using a battery meter but because I am not, that piece is still intact. So let's actually take the dress panel off. We can go inside the panel and look at that before we actually get into programming and whatnot. So to take off the dress panel, there are just two screws on the top that you unscrew. And then the whole thing slides up, maybe, and off. Set that down. So this is now the inside of the Notifier AFP200. Down here you have your AC120 volts, and then this is a resettable breaker for surges. So that will actually cut your AC to the panel momentarily. And if some sort of surge or short trips it, then you just press that button to reset. Right here, this is your high voltage. This is actually gets the power from this terminal to the two transformers behind the actual circuit board. Right here, this is your battery input when uh, this is a special plug to Honeywell panels that allow you to hook up your batteries. Right there is an LED that is your ground fault LED that will come on whenever you have a ground fault. Up here are two more LEDs. You have a battery trouble LED that will come on and a high charge LED that will come on for those varying conditions. Over here, you have a switch for where it says normal TBL and TBL less AC. And then up here, you have one that says term and ACS. So depending on what kind of enunciator you are using, you switch it to terminal mode or ACS mode. And I am using terminal mode enunciator. Coming up here in this first block, these are all your external power supplies. You have unregulated 24 volt power, non-resettable 24 volt power, 24 volt power, and resettable 24 volt power. Over here, these are your bell circuits or panel circuits. These are basically your um, notification appliance circuits. You have one through four running across the top. All these blocks will pop off and you can see the labelings in the back. Here's one that doesn't have one of those terminal blocks on it, so it actually shows you everything. So if you want to see like what the actual labels are, you take this part off and then you can see the labeling and then screw in as you need. Here are your three relays. Um, they are not programmable. You just have supervisory, alarm, and trouble. That's all you have. Um, so regardless of what is making the condition happen, it will go for that specific condition. Over here is your EAI um, 242 I believe it is communication this is how the enunciator talks to the panel there is an input and an output and that is how the enunciator talks to and from the panel and then here this is your SLC loop so you have um, a style A or style B line that you can come in and this is where all your um, modules and detectors will go on is that line after that there's not really anything else on the main circuit board that is um, of meaning other than a couple um, jumpers that you can cut for different things like here's a uh, tamper one if you want to have the door set as tamper if this is um, 
because this panel can also be set up as a burglary system. Uh, there's a there's a different face that would go on it, but it's basically the same thing, and it can be set up for fire and burglary. So if we actually go into the panels, you can see it is an all normal. These first two lines you can customize to say whatever you want. So I have fire alarms and such notifier AFP 200. At the next line is your condition statement, which says all systems normal. Then after that is your time, day, and date. Over here you have your alphanumeric keypad. It is labeled uh, one through nine and then zero, and then your asterisk and your pound. And then on those, you can step up and you get your letters. Down here, the, this is your um, directional arrow and enter key. This is a back or cancel button and then enters enter. Over here, you have your acknowledge or step button, which lets you scroll through different events on the panel and acknowledge it to make the panel tone stop. Here you have your alarm silence button. This will turn off your silenceable NACs on the panel. So those are your bell circuits up there. The drill function, you hold that for two seconds and it will activate any silenceable NACs. Any NACs that are set as sil non-silenceable will not activate. So I have two NACs, or no, just one NAC, NAC4, that is set as non-silenceable to be my strobes. That will not activate during a drill. So if I press and hold, you'll see just the horns will go. And that is what happens during a drill. And then system reset, this also doubles as your lamp test. So when you press it, the tone and every LED and LCD digit will come on. And so that acts as your lamp test as well. So we can actually now dive into some of the programming in here before we get over to the enunciator I have now. So to enter programming mode, you just hit enter and then you're going to, we're going to start programming. So you go to programming and then there are two separate passwords for two separate levels. There is an installer level and like a user level. We'll call it user level. Um, so we actually are going to go all the way into installer. It's not like simplex where, you know, you have the different levels of access where it's like, you know, level four will give you access to level three. This is like level one only gives you access to level one and level two only gives you access to level two, not level one. So they are kind of different. When you go into programming to enter your password, you see your system trouble light does come on and it does start blinking. So then you go ahead and you enter your password, whatever it may be. So we'll go ahead and enter that and hit enter. So we are going to go into uh, basic programming. Network programming is something that we will not cover in this video because it is not applicable to this panel. So we will hit one to go into basic programming. And you can see you have all your options. You choose your option by hitting the numbers on the keypad. So zero is clear, which is like it resets the whole panel. One is an auto program where it basically pulls in all the modules and all the bell circuits and will configure them for you. Two is point <coughs> that lets you go in on a point by point basis and manipulate specific things about a, a specific point. Password changes your passwords logged into the panel. <coughs> message changes how or uh, what that custom message says. So mine says fire alarms and such notify AFP 200, but you can make it say whatever. Zones that uh, your panel does have different zones, even though it is an addressable system. It will have different zones to group different kinds of points together. So you can change those zones there. Six is special zones. That controls how a, a specific point calls a specific zone. So like that is where you do your um, NAC coding. So NAC coding on this is zone 98. So here are your zones. So you can do, um, if you want the point to do a pre-signal, then you make it call uh, zone 90. Uh, if it's a releasing zone, you make it call 91 through 94. 98 is your code that changes, um, you know, how you want your NAC to be coded. So you can see this is set to temporal. And then to get back, you just press the back arrow and then your pre-alarm. And then to get out of it, you press enter. Enter. Oh, we're already back. My bad. 
Um, and then seven is just your general system settings. Um, so you can do your silence inhibit, your auto silence, your verified time, what kind of time you want. If you have an enunciator on it, I have an LCD 80 on terminal mode. If you want your mom, uh, modules and detectors to blink, and then these two, I do not know what they mean yet. And then get back, you press enter. So that is everything in the highest level. So we will actually go back down one level. So um, we'll keep going back. It will tell you, hey, if you want to check, hit enter. Um, or you can just keep going back and it will do an auto check and let you know if your programming is good, which is nice. It can catch your programming errors for you. So we're going to enter the next password in to get us into the lower level. And lower level lets you uh, enable, disable specific points. Two lets you go in and change and work with your uh, detectors and sensors. So go back. Three is clearing your verification tally. Four is clearing your history. Five is setting your time and six is doing a walk test. So we will actually do a walk test right now. So to do a walk test, it gives you instructions to enter to start, backspace to stop. So this is backspace, this is enter, and we'll hit enter. And all walk test does is it does the uh, same thing as this panel where it will just set the alarms off for five seconds. It doesn't pulse an address. So if I just open it up. It will just sound them continuously. <clears throat> and during that walk test, your alarm relays will not go. And the backspace to stop. So that is pretty much everything in programming. Um, it's a very, very easy panel to program and it does check it for you, which is nice. If you have any sort of mistakes, it will tell you. So we are actually now going to throw the dress panel back on. So to put it back on, you slide it up and get it around the screws. And then you slide it back down to catch those two tabs on the bottom. And then you get your screwdriver, screw them back in. Um, actually, I'll show you supervisory real quick, uh, just to kind of show everything. So trouble on here, we'll do a pulsating slow beep. And then supervisory will do a pulsating fast beep. So if I enter supervisory, so this is now the supervisory, then you would acknowledge it. Uh, you can silence if need be, it will still give me the alarm silence light. And then to reset, you just hit the reset button and you can see on the uh, display, it will show you everything that's happening. So an active supervisory, the smoke fan enable switch point four, zone four. So it's calling on zone four because it's supervisory. It's module address four. This is the name I gave it, and this is what's happening in the panel. And that is the highest uh, priority alarm right now. So we can go ahead and reset. It does a lamp test and then shuts everything off. So you close the panel up, and then we will go over now to the enunciator. So this is a notifier LCD 80 fire alarm enunciator. This is set at terminal mode because it is easier to install to the panel and literally mimics the exact panel. So from here, you can do your contrast adjust. You can do a lamp test. So you press and hold for a lamp test and there it is. This is your global acknowledge key, your silence key, and your reset key. A reset here does not do a lamp test like it does on the other panel. So if I just press reset, that's all it does is it will do a reset. So we'll do a quick um, demonstration. So we'll activate the fire alarm. Maybe. This module's slow, I don't know why. So we'll activate the fire alarm. I don't know why, it just started doing this. I don't know if uh, something's wrong with the pull station. Let's try one more time. Actually, you know what, let's reset the panel one more time. That seems to help. So reset from here. Panel is now resetting. Now let's try one more time. I think, I think someone on my terminal block 
came loose. Let's go activate that other pull station real quick. So here you can see it gives me everything that would be on the other screen. And this only beeps once every couple of seconds, regardless of if it's a supervisory trouble or alarm. It will just do one pulsated beep. So we can go ahead and acknowledge that will stop the beeping. So it tells us it now has been acknowledged. We'll go ahead and silence. So it now says alarm silenced and the alarms have been silenced. And then we can go ahead and do a system reset by pressing the reset button. So the system is now resetting. What's kind of interesting though is that that enunciator directly mimics um, this screen. So like if I go into programming mode and I'll just, you know, so there's like my characters halfway in, it will actually show what's happening. So it, you could see as I was typing, those asterisks would come up on the screen as I do. It does um, real time from the screen. As I work on this one, it will go to the other one, which is kind of interesting. So, um, this has been a longer than normal video, but I hope to anyone who's trying to get a Notifier AFP 200, it helps. And I don't really think that there's anything else to do. If you guys think I missed anything or have any questions, let me know in the comments. So, thank you guys for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.